When National Commander Butch Whitehead was elected in August 2019, our organization was poised to continue its success under his leadership throughout our centennial year. One that was supposed to be filled with numerous in-person celebrations, marking 100 years of service to America's disabled veterans and their families. Unfortunately, those plans were curbed when the COVID-19 pandemic reached our shores and forced the cancellation of countless events nationwide throughout 2020, including the year's DAV and Auxiliary National Convention that was to take place in Dallas. Without the convention and its requisite election of national officers, Commander Whitehead retained his position at the helm of our organization, marking only the second time in history that our national commander remained in office for more than one year. Fortunately, this turn of events gave DAV and those we serve a second phenomenal year under his steadfast leadership. With the pandemic in high gear in August, Commander Whitehead hosted the DAV and Auxiliary Virtual Salute, a special online event to honor advocates and supporters of America's disabled veterans. I don't think anyone could have forecasted the events that have forced us together virtually. But I'm more than proud of the dedication and commitment to mission accomplishment that I have seen out of the DAV staff, DAV volunteers, and the entire organization. The event also recognized our 2020 Outstanding Disabled Veteran of the Year, Adam Greathouse, an Army veteran who suffered a traumatic brain injury and collapsed lung due to toxic exposure in Kosovo. After years of depression and addiction, Adam pulled his life together and now works at his local VA medical center in West Virginia to help other veterans get their lives back on track. I drive about two hours and 15 minutes one way, three days a week. And I would do that to go meet veterans, walk them through the process. Another event led by Commander Whitehead was the first ever virtual DAV 5K in November. We were very grateful to have Humana as the presenting sponsor for this event, which featured more than 3,400 participants taking part in every state across the country, walking, rolling, Running or riding is a way to thank those who served and raise awareness of the issues veterans face today. Known as one of the premier veterans advocacy organizations in Washington, DAV's legislative efforts continued despite the pandemic, resulting in a number of victories for ill and injured veterans as the 116th Congress came to a close. In 2020, 36 DAV resolutions were included in federal legislation eight of which were adopted and passed into law. As we work with a new presidential administration and new leadership at the VA under Secretary Dennis McDonough, DAV is confident in the progress that can be made in achieving our key legislative goals for the 117th Congress. In February, as part of our virtual midwinter event, DAV's national legislative team posted a series of videos on DAV.org that laid out these goals and provided tips for benefit protection team leaders on how to increase the efficacy of members and supporters' advocacy efforts in a virtual environment. As part of our midwinter activities, Commander Whitehead provided testimony virtually before Congress during a joint session of the House and Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, where he advocated for the passage of the Veterans Burn Pits Exposure Recognition Act a DAV conceptualized piece of legislation that would formally concede that veterans who served near burn pits were exposed to harmful chemicals and toxins and make it easier to prove direct service connection in their VA disability claims. Thank you for providing me the opportunity to present the 2021 legislative program of DAV, Disabled American Veterans. Commander Whitehead also pressed lawmakers on other topics such as addressing gaps and inequities in programs and services for women and minority veterans and strengthening veterans' mental health care and suicide prevention programs. DAV continues to be the nationwide leader in representing veterans in their claims for benefits, fighting to ensure they receive justice for the sacrifices they've made during service. With more than 1.1 million powers of attorney, DAV provided representation for more than 160,000 VA claims and helped veterans and family members obtain more than $23 billion in earned benefits 
in 2020. DAV's Disaster Relief Program also continued making an impact by aiding our fellow veterans across the nation who unfortunately found themselves victims of natural disasters. Over the past five years, the program has provided nearly $4 million to veterans affected by natural disasters. While some of our service offices have reopened following local, state, and CDC guidelines, the nationwide call system DAV immediately set up at the beginning of the pandemic allowed our national service officers and employees to provide normal benefit services uninterrupted to those in need. As unemployment soared in the wake of the pandemic, DAV was there to help veterans through very difficult times. From April 2020 to May 2021, the COVID-19 Unemployment Relief Fund assisted veterans who lost jobs or income as a result of the pandemic. More than 8,500 veterans received more than $2.1 million in relief. In 2020, DAV helped facilitate 92 in-person and virtual job fairs, which had more than 32,000 attendees. Since 2014, nearly 240,000 attendees have received more than 151,000 job offers through these events. These efforts, along with our partnership with Hiring America's televised veteran employment series, highlighted DAV's growing influence in this area. This spring, our membership department provided guidance to departments and chapters nationwide, permitting them to reopen their doors from COVID-19 shutdowns as long as they are able to meet state, local, and CDC guidelines. With the safety and well-being of our members and the general public being DAV's top priority, and with vaccinations being administered throughout the country, many chapters have reopened under this guidance. The department also continued its effort to recruit new members through its Recruit a Warrior initiative, which helps our members reach as many veterans as possible with just a few clicks of a mouse. By signing up for and sharing personalized Recruit a Warrior links on social media, members can collect recruitment points to be used toward DAV gear and other rewards. For 2020, DAV Transportation Network drivers spent more than 675,000 hours logging over 9.6 million miles and providing more than 243,000 rides to veterans at no cost. Since 1987, more than 19 million veterans have been transported over 760 million miles through the program, enough to go around the world more than 30,500 times. DAV chapters and departments, along with the National Service Foundation's Columbia Trust, have also donated more than 3,500 vehicles to the program, while Ford Motor Company, whose support of DAV dates back to Henry Ford providing 50 Model Ts to bring disabled World War I veterans to our second national convention in 1922, has also donated more than 230 vehicles. In 2020, Ford also donated more than one million face masks to help support DAV's mission and to protect our nation's veterans during COVID-19. The masks were distributed primarily to VA medical centers to protect veterans, their caregivers, and the many selfless volunteers. They were also sent to national service offices where veterans receive assistance and the organization's headquarters to protect DAV staff so they could continue safely supporting the men and women who served. Both the National Disabled Veterans Tea Tournament in September and National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic in March were turned into virtual events. Usually held on the Greens in Iowa or the Mountains of Colorado respectively, DAV and the VA teamed up to provide participants with at-home video instruction. These videos are archived on each event's website and will serve as invaluable tools to help veterans along their rehabilitative journeys. The Charitable Service Trust supports dozens of unique initiatives that provide injured and ill veterans rehabilitative and emotional therapy, transition assistance, employment support, emergency relief, and a range of other services. Last year, the Trust once again received a perfect score from Charity Navigator for sound fiscal management and commitment to accountability and transparency. 
It was the 16th time the Trust has received the coveted four-star rating from America's largest independent charity evaluator since first being evaluated in 2002, and the acknowledgement speaks volumes about the Trust's careful and efficient stewardship of donated funds as more than 95 cents of every dollar donated to the Trust went to programs that directly support veterans. In 2020, the Trust issued more than $7.2 million in grants to support our nation's heroes, their families, and survivors. In October, the Trust awarded a $1 million grant to Save a Warrior, an Ohio-based nonprofit committed to ending the staggering suicide rate plaguing veterans, active duty military, and first responders. The grant was used to support the construction and development of Save a Warrior's new DAV National Center of Excellence, which broke ground in April and will provide a healing outlet for ill and injured veterans combating suicide and mental health issues. We have also continued expanding our social media reach with 98 million interactions on Facebook, 5.6 million interactions on Twitter, 7.4 million on Instagram, and 3.2 million on LinkedIn. Additionally, DAV public service announcements garnered 9.7 billion impressions at an earned media value of nearly $108 million in 2020. In September, along with Department of Ohio's commander, John Plavinsock, I laid a wreath at the grave of DAV founder, Judge Robert Mark to pay our respects to his contribution to our organization and commemorate its 100th anniversary. Even 60 years after his death, his accomplishments are still having a direct and positive impact on so many lives. Thanks also came from the fighters of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, who have cemented themselves as dedicated supporters of DAV and its mission. Since teaming up, the UFC has become a prominent partner in highlighting the organization and the impact it makes in the lives of veterans to a new audience. Congratulations, DAV, on your 100th anniversary. Thank you, DAV, for supporting more victories for veterans. In November, DAV teamed up with the History Channel to air The Battle Never Ends, an hour-long documentary highlighting the origins of DAV and its accomplishments throughout the past century. The program was partially filmed at the American Veterans Disabled for Life Memorial in Washington, D.C. It was hosted and narrated by actor and Hollywood military advisor Dale Dye, a combat wounded Marine veteran of Vietnam and DAV life member. The documentary is a chronicle look back at America's military engagements from World War I to today. It focuses on how DAV responded to the emerging needs of disabled veterans and their families throughout our history. I never knew that I could get my automobile modified. Those are the kinds of things that DAV does for the veteran. DAV also continued its Field of Flags campaign at our national headquarters in Cold Spring, Kentucky. This year, we were honored to have EG America as the campaign's matching gift partner. With their generous support, more than 1,700 flags honored the sacrifices of America's veterans, and we raised more than $100,000 to support them. The campaign was certainly a success, and it was the last time it would take place in Cold Spring. This past year, DAV began construction on its new national headquarters in Erlanger, Kentucky, just a few miles up the road from Cold Spring. The new headquarters, which opens this summer, replaces a nearly 60-year-old facility that is too big and inefficient for DAV's modern needs. It will be a place where DAV's team members, leaders, and supporters can gather to collaborate, strategize, and execute on behalf of our nation's heroes. In addition to being designed for a more efficient modern workforce, the new headquarters location has greater visibility in the greater Cincinnati area which will bring more awareness to our free services and support for veterans and their families. Supporting us in our efforts is the DAV Auxiliary, 
which had another busy year under the guidance of Commander Diane Franz, who also retained her office. Through their unmatched, dedicated service to local community veterans, Commander Franz, National Adjutant Pat Kemper, and the rest of our friends and allies in the Auxiliary continued their efforts to support those who served and their families. Usually we do an annual Thanksgiving dinner, but this year with COVID, we were not able to do that. So we're putting these bags together with little things that each veteran can enjoy while they're staying here at the Medical Center. Thank you all for your donations and thank you for everything you do. And thank you for all that you do. The COVID-19 pandemic has certainly brought challenging times for our nation, its veterans, and their families. But DAV, an organization of veterans serving veterans, has adapted to continue meeting the needs of those we serve. With growing numbers of Americans vaccinated, we can now finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like you, I look forward to getting through this. I look forward to seeing our dedicated members, volunteers, and supporters ramp up efforts to do right by those forever changed in service. And I look forward to another year serving alongside you to keep our promises to America's veterans and their families.